Slicers, this is George at Hypno Comics here in Ventura, and I'm here with Bob Layton, who, hey. just, who made the trek from West Hollywood. It's a bit more us. of a drive than I thought it'd be, George, you know? <laughs> so, he's joining us today. We're going to be signing autographs. I mean, obviously, the definitive Iron Man artist here at Hypno Comics. And again, I really appreciate you coming up. My pleasure, man. And um, what we like to do is just kind of hang out, you know, talk a little bit about, especially when we get big hitting creators like this guy in our house. I want to talk about like your early days, man, at Marvel? Tell us how it was, your first project, who you shacked up with. Give us the, give us the, yeah, give <laughs> yeah. Because Lord knows, I got into comics for the chicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, it's it was such a different time than now. I mean, there wasn't even an internet then. You right. Know? I mean, um, no, I started up at Marvel in 1976 which dates me considerably, yeah. I, I think my first regular series there was The Champions. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, uh, it was really, uh, this is a funny story, it goes to show you that I'm not a genius, okay? Because <laughs> uh, I, uh, I had done some team books over at DC, and then I, I went to Marvel, because that's where I actually wanted to be. Right. Uh, but I started with DC because I, I apprenticed with Wally Wood, and so yeah. that was, I got my foot in the door there. But uh, when I got to Marvel, all I got was team books. And finally, you know, I did Champions for a while, and then I, they offered me the X-Men. And I'm like, huh, X-Men. So at the time, it was a bi-monthly comic. Dave yeah. Cockrum was doing it. Yep. He, did, he would, didn't like the inking on the book at all, and he and I are friends from the old fanzine days. So he says, Bob, yeah, well, come on board, do X-Men with me. So I did like one issue of it, and I'm like, I don't know these guys. You know? I mean, where's where's the angel? Where's Cyclops? You know, where's you know? Oh yeah, because it's a new X Men. Yeah, it was the new X Men. Right, right, and At right. the time, they were I mean, literally new. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, oh, they all got weird costumes that are hard to do, and there's like 50 people, you know, on a page, and blah 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 blah. And then DC offered me, you know, a contract. Uh, and at the time, because we uh, back then we 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 were like old football players. We played with leather helmets and stuff. I mean, I, I think I got forty dollars a page complete back then. Wow. You know, and uh, no rights, of course, or anything else. Yeah. So, or royalties or anything like that. So, DC offered me a, a steady contract, so I, I, I took it. Took but it, that's sir. where I went over, and that's how I met David Michelini, and we, we paired up and worked on a few projects there, and from there, uh, after DC looked like they were gonna implode, we jumped ship and went back to Marvel as a team. Yeah. And that's how we got Iron Man, because they were, back then, uh, when the, uh, they only published like 15 titles or something, if you recall. I don't know how old you are. I'm 47. I'm 47. But <laughs> in those days, uh, you kind of like, what they did was they took their A-listers off because, you know, they had contracts with the, the distributors because okay. was, everything was newsstand back right, then. Right, right, right. And there were no comic shops at that point. So if the book was going to get canceled, and which was really odd because back then the cancellation cutoff was 90,000 copies. Oh, my which God. By today is a, today, a, yeah. a large yeah. erection for any yeah, creator, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. 35,000 is a big hit. Yeah, <laughs> no, but back then it was like 90. So uh, what they would do is they'd take their A-listers off the book when it got canceled, but they were still contracted to do like six issues or whatever. So they would that's how they tried out new talent on the books that were going to get canceled. And yeah. that's kind of how Dave and I wound up on it, because they, they had, like, I think Ghost Rider was one of them, and, and it was like Iron Man, I said, take Iron Man, take Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'll explain later. And Dave wasn't a Marvel guy, he was kind of a DC guy. He did so. great work on Daredevil, though. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is, it's part of it because he came in with a totally fresh approach to looking at all the Marvel characters, because he really wasn't much of a Marvel guy. Got it. And since we worked together as a, as a co-plotting team, you know, in terms of creating the stories together, you know, I said, just take Iron Man, because I used to make my own little Iron Man comics and crap, you know. <laughs> in fact, really, it was funny. The Camelot story was actually a story I came up with as a kid. I told Dave about it. He goes, that's, that's great. Let's do it. Really? You know, yeah. All right. Um, but uh, so that we wound up on the book, and we, we just pretty much said, can we do whatever we want? And they're like, hell, we don't Run, care. Cancel. We're, we're going to cancel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we like killed everybody on page five, created a whole new supporting cast, Rhodey, Mrs. Arbogast, blah, 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 blah. Right. Created the new armors, all that. The rest is history, Stealth as armor, they say. space armor. Yeah, the rest yeah. is history, as yeah. they say. But uh, um, that was all because the book was going to get canceled, you know, because, but it, uh, oddly enough, it went from 
selling like ninety thousand to about three hundred thousand within the space of six so issues. You got to yeah. keep your jobs. There. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> we got to keep our our jobs, our cushy, <laughs> underpaid jobs. Yes. So you did. Um, I mean, obviously, you're 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 well known for Iron Man. So you really wanted the book, obviously. What is it that you loved about Iron Man in, in general? I mean, what what drew you to that character? I was always a fan of the Arthurian legends as a kid. Okay. You know, re- reading. Uh, you know, books on King Arthur and all that stuff, and I loved knights. Yeah, you know, that, that was always kind of a, a thing with me. Plus, I had that. I was also a, 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 I was a car guy. I grew up in Indianapolis, so you know, okay. r- racing cars right. and, and car. You know, so I used to draw cars all the time too, and stuff like that. And it was just like, it was kind of an amalgam of those two loves, you know. Um, but. Uh, with him, it was kind of like, I, I always thought it would be much cooler to be Tony Stark than to be Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? I mean, I joke with people that I created my own role model. You know? <laughs> it's like, so I, you know, we set out to make Tony Stark the coolest guy in the world, and then I set out to try to emulate him as much as possible in my real life. <laughs> yeah, that brings to mind one of your one of your one of covers you did the the mission in Monica one where he's yeah. up against well, the James wall Bond. like James Bond. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's a my, great my cover. Attitude, <laughs> my attitude about him my attitude about him was that he only should become Iron Man when he can't handle it as Tony Stark. Right, right. You know, and the fact that he's always the smartest guy in the room. And he's the coolest guy in the room, you yeah. know, and he's the guy with the most toys and blah 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 blah. Money. So yeah, it was always to me. Much cooler to be Tony Stark, and that's something. And as you know, in the old days, the, Tony Stark was just a cipher, like right. Bruce Wayne and all the other ones that they just used him as a conduit to get him into the armor. Into the suits, right? Yeah, and so to me, it's kind of like I, w- I wanted to change that whole dynamic, you know, and focus because if you, I think if you believe the guy, that when he puts on the armor, you still think of of the it, guy in the suit. It, it's him in that suit. You still you still think of it as Tony. Yeah. You know, where, yeah, you know, I think before that, they literally almost treated them like they were separate entities. So you were with Marvel in the 70s. Was that when they were still doing the whole stamp on the back of the paycheck thing? Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm not, that's why I didn't take my limousine here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you see people you talk explain about that. that. Yeah, no, basically, yeah. There, there was a rubber stamp on the back of our paychecks. And in, in language unbecoming to civilians, uh, it, it basically stated that when we endorsed the check, we signed away all our rights right. to everything that we created there. So, okay. uh, and now that Iron Man, myth. now that Iron Man is a billion-dollar franchise, uh, I see none of that. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's bittersweet. Yeah, I got you. You know, I mean, what what really I think irritates me more. I mean, because in, in a million years, I, I never would have thought that it would wound up being, you know, a global, you know, phenomenon. Right. And, boom. Uh, Top shelf here, hip now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I never would have anticipated in a million years that yeah. it would have turned into what, what it is. I mean, hell, you know, I was so happy just to be doing the book at the time. I mean, you know. Yeah. It's like. But, you know, to me, that was a fulfillment of a dream. I think what, what bothers me more is the merchandising aspect. Yeah. Well, because if you notice, you go to cons, you'll see that most of the T-shirts that Marvel puts out, is, it's stated it's the old school stuff. Yeah. And the reason why is they don't, have, they don't have to pay any creator royalties or anything to us. So that's why there must be literally 10,000 pieces of merchandise out there with my art on it. Yeah. That I get nothing. And that's... You know, because DC is much better about paying foreign pr- reprint rights. That's one of the reasons why I quit Marvel, because they, uh, they don't give us foreign reprint rights, they don't give us merchandising rights, not any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, any kind of royalties on any of that stuff. Wow, didn't know that. Yeah, and I just said, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'd be damned if I'm going to continue to, you know, aid in my own exploitation. Sure, sure. You know. So, let's talk about, you were a vital part of Valiant. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, uh, I am... Credited in Wikipedia as the co-creator of the value. Right, writers. right. Co- co-architect. Co-architect. Yeah. Well, you guys had a tight universe when that when that company first launched in the was a really tight continuity. Yeah. It, well, you, you forget about the two or a half years of it we floundered and, and and wasted a ton of money doing really stupid shit. Yeah. You know, it's like like Nintendo and well, yeah, and right. Wrestling books. Yeah. You know, it's like. 
And then uh, you guys picked up the Solar and the Magnus and yeah, and it's like Turok. And that was an exhausting time for me. Well, you know, I mean, Shooter had lured me over there with the promise of you know having a percentage of the company because he, you know, he had always picked my brain because I was always a good idea man. Yeah. So he, at Mar when I was at Marvel, he was always picking my brain, you know, for ideas and concepts and things of that nature. So you know, he basically you know, convinced me to leave Marvel at the height of its, uh, at, at Iron Man's popularity to yeah. go over there and, you know, with, and work in a startup thing. So it was, it was exhausting. I mean, I was there 17 hours a day. And what you don't know is I was doing production too. I mean, I was back running the production department as well as inking all the books and, mm -hmm. you know, and editing stuff. I mean, it was, it was just, it was grueling. I put myself in the hospital twice from oh, exhaustion, man. you know? Wow. It's a startup company, you know. Yeah. You, 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 you do whatever you can to keep sure, it going. Sure, sure. You own a business, you I, know. I am, yes, I do uh, work long yeah. days. Yes. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I miss, sometimes I miss my corporate job, but not that much. Yeah. So, um, so any of the characters, um, what are some of the one-off books that you did with Marvel and DC? I mean, because, you know, obviously you're known for your Iron Man. Um, me, I, am a, can I say the F word? Nope. I'm a fucking Secret Wars junkie. I was such a, <laughs> I am, in the 80s, I was their target audience, yeah, man. Really? They made that yeah. for toys. I didn't give a shit about the toys. Well, yeah, I, 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 I designed the toys. Did you? Yeah. Okay, they were awesome. Yeah. No. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but the, just the, the covers on that. I mean, Secret Wars, really, I had the little cloth wall scroll. I mean. Uh, it was the first big event exactly. comic, in, you know, in, 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 in comics history. You yeah. Know, where, where basically it tied into the entire universe. Yeah. So yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah. You know? it was was it cool to be a part of that? Well, yeah, I got drafted. Yeah. You know, I was in between projects and when Zek got behind, I kind of just got drafted. You yeah. know, I was like, you know, plus I, I've always been pretty fast. I mean, I'm a deadline conscious kind of guy. So, you know, uh, and and Zek was, because you know, any kind of team book like that is just, it's, yeah, cluster, there's, it's a there's cluster. A lot going on. There's a lot going you know? on in that book, yeah. And so, the, some of the covers that you did, like, I mean, the, the yeah. whole cold in the mountain, the composition on that's just great. I mean, you know, that's yeah, that's considered one of the top hundred covers of all time. It's an awesome cover, it, yeah. which I'm going to ask you to sign for me today. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, they just did. I think uh, Comic Resources did a a um, poll of the top hundred covers of all time. How many do you have on there? Five. Good for yeah. you, dude. Yeah. What were they? I can't recall. I, a demon in a bottle, obviously. Right, sure. Oh, uh, Thor. Uh, Thor. I don't know. The, it's the Thor where he's uh, Herc, Herc, Herc. pushing him. Around. Yeah. I had one that, copy, and some guy it, bought it. It was uh, the, it. the the Secret Wars cover was on there, and it was a couple others. I can't remember what the other two were. The Herc one's awesome, where he's just straight face palm and Thor, and he's like, "Step aside, Thunder God." <laughs> yes. And he's got all the chicks. We kind of broke the fourth wall on that. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's like. Yeah. Was it Assistant Editor's Month or something? Yeah, it was something like that, yeah. Somebody so, was on vacation, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Walt was on vacation. Yeah, it was yeah, a fill-in, yeah. you know, but it was just, <laughs> I said, well, let's just do something incredibly goofy, you know? That's a great cover, man. <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, uh, so, That's yeah, a but great I've, cover. I've uh, well, see, there was a time where I was cover artist for Marvel, specifically. I mean, I did like seven covers a month for, through, a, through a, like a five or six year period there. Yeah. Because I lived a block away from the offices, so I'd be sitting at home you know, ink and whatever book I was working on, and this envelope would come sliding under my door, and it was a cover with a poster on it saying, "We need this by tomorrow." So, a block away, it would either be a sketch from Dave Cockrum, who was the cover guy at the time, or yeah, uh, or whatever. But they would just they they'd run a messenger up to my place and slide it under the door, and you know, I'd bang it out and drop it off in the office in the morning, and so. Yeah, so I, I've wound up doing just uh, like seven, eight covers a month up there for years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Plus, I, I mean, filled in for John Romita when he was on vacation. The two weeks he got off, yeah, I was the art director up there every year for two years, which everybody loved, because John was like Scotty from Star Trek, right? John would always like someone would come in. And, How long is it going to take to get the correction? And he would say two days. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I mean he could do it in an hour, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So you know, it's like when he was gone, people would just spray piles of stuff all at once because they know I would bang it out real right. quick, you know. <laughs> the go-to yeah, guy, Bob yeah. Layton. It was really, it was kind of funny. <laughs> um, what are some of your your favorite covers that you've done since you've done so many? I mean, that weren't Iron Man related. I mean, obviously, Secret Wars was some of my favorite yeah. ones. Um, the Galactus, uh, supervillain classic, the Galactus. It was a uh, Marvel saga. You're talking about, yeah. The that was you're talking about the one where he straddled the. 
No, no, the or real the big head, the big head one. There's two of them. The big head one. Yeah, there's two of them. The second one, there's one with Galactus, you know, like just uh, in space and uh, the ships are going by him and stuff. And I had a dream of that the cover, and I got it in the middle of the night and drew it. Right on. It happens to me sometimes. That's good. Where I just get an image in my head while I'm sleeping. I work in my sleep. <laughs> And uh, I, I'd get up and, you know, just draw it. But, yeah, I, I remember the Galactus as well. I mean, there's, there's been a variety of stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't fall in love with my own work very much. No? No, you know, that's why I never keep the originals, you know, or anything like that. Because, you know, I, I, it's just uh, I, my ability to understand art exceeds my ability to draw it. Huh? And so it never, it, well, Dickie, I used to talk to Dick, Dick Giordano. We, we used to talk about this over lunch all the time. Because I, I, I bitch about how things just never turn out the way you want it. And he goes, yeah, but nobody knows the picture in your head. Yeah. You see, everyone looks at the final product, and they think it looks really cool. But see, I look at it, and I, I realize I had the picture in my head, and I always lose something in translation. Isn't there like one or two that stand out where you're just like, man, I just knocked nah, this out of a park. Nah, I'm, I'm like, I'm just one of those guys who just doesn't fall in love with his own work. Well, I, you know, I don't even draw anymore. Now, now I work as a writer primarily, yeah. so... I kind of draw for fun, you know. I go to cons. That's how I get, you know, do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Every three or four days, I'll, I'll sit down at the drawing board and I'll, I'll either do, a, I'll take a commission from somebody, yeah, or I'll, I'll just do a drawing just to keep my skill set going. Sure. But you know, I don't really, since I don't really work in comics anymore, it's kind of like one of those things. I'm so afraid I'm going to lose. Because people say, isn't it like riding a bike? And I said, no. It's poorly. It's, no, it's the difference between riding a bike and training for the Tour de France. You know, I mean, I spent 40 years developing, you know, a set of skills that, you know, you have to keep honed or otherwise they just, sure. yeah, they, they go live Exercise. with Jesus. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. We've got people lining up for Bob. I appreciate yeah. you coming all the way up here. It's my pleasure, man. <laughs> and I know you don't, you say you're not in love with your work, but you got tons of people out there that are. I didn't say it was bad. I just no, said no, I, no, I don't no. fall in love with I, it. I mean, like there's, there's some of your stuff that I love. Some of the other people here love. I mean, so you've, I mean, it's a, g a great body of work, and I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Josh. All right. Later, slicers. <laughs>